feminine power. Okay, this let me, you know, everybody's talking about empowerment for women. And yes, they're on their male side. They, that's the male energy. Empowerment, look what I can do. Look what I can accomplish. Look what I can achieve. That's our male side. Well, what is the female power? Most people have no words for that. If we go to a female empowerment class, what would it be? <laughs> Actually, what it would be is something like if people watch that movie, The Secret, you know, which is using your attitude and your positive feelings to generate a frequency out there which reflects what's inside of you. That was a whole big movement. And it's impractical if you just look at that because that's just one part of life, but that's the female power, which is your attitude determines what you get. Okay, a positive attitude, you will always get more. Love is the answer. And so what is, if we look at in terms of male power is look what I can do. Female power is look what I can get other people to do for me. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> this is so great. You know, you get a guy to do stuff. He wants to do it rather than if uh -huh. like, I have to do it to make you happy. No, I do it to make you happier. It's a whole <laughs> different context. And I want to, you know, you articulated uh, what some of the things she does with love to motivate you. I want to give another practical example as well, something that I think is helpful to people what Bonnie did. So for years, you know, one of my flaws is that uh, I tend to be a little more messy than her, which makes it hard for her because she keeps cleaning up after me and I never know there's a mess. So I never <laughs> learned how to clean up after messes. You know, since, since she's passed, I've had to learn how to clean up my messes. So that was like, I never saw the, how messy I was until she stopped cleaning up for it, but she would re resent it at times until she figured out how to get a change. Now the change she got was one of the things was our house is really long and I would go down the hallway, go through the living room, go through the dining room, go through the kitchen to get to the TV room. So I'm going from my bedroom to the TV room. So I'm turning off light switches all the way. And usually I would just walk through and turn on switches and forget to turn them off on the other end of the room. So she'd say, John, you always forget to turn out the living room light. How often do I have to do this? How many times do I have to tell you? And this is several years, which becomes more and more frustrating for her. Now, what doesn't make sense to a man on one level is, well, it wasn't upsetting the first time, so why is it upsetting 50 times <laughs> later? Thing. It's not a big deal. Turning out the light is not a big deal. And we had conversations, she said, but the electric bill is so high. And I said, honey, I make plenty of money, so it doesn't make a difference to me. And she says, no, we need to be more environmentally safe. So I said, okay. So then I got solar. So now I got solar. She says, yeah, but we have to set an example. <laughs> <laughs> to who? Anyway, but it, it would just frustrate. And part of what's going on inside of her to understand her perspective is if I have to ask him 50 times to do this, if he, when he forgets to do it, it means he doesn't love me. Mm -hmm. See, that's the interpretation she's having. And to be quite honest, that's not true. Of course I love her. It's just that the way I look at it, it's not significant. To her, it's those little requests. And when I don't do it, she feels like, oh, then he doesn't love me. And ironically for a woman, she thinks if he doesn't do little things for me, then what's he going to do if it's big? Okay. From his point of view, it's a little thing. So no big deal. It's the big stuff I'll respond to. But her, <laughs> see how we look at it, we can, we can look at it very differently. So the little things can be very upsetting to her. So one day she figured out how to completely change that away and many other ways, but this is an example. So I was used to her looking in the door with disapproval in her eyes and she put her hands on her hips and she'd say, you know, you forgot again, how many times do I have to tell you to turn out the light in the living room? Like a unhappy mother with a child. And of course that creates a defensive reaction in me. And then she stare at me till I said, I was sorry. And if I did say, I'm sorry, she'd say, well, you don't feel it. And I said, it's true. I don't feel it. <laughs> so this is the stages of my growing through this. Then she'd look at me with those eyes and she'd say, she looked at me and, and instead of, I couldn't say I'm sorry and have it be genuine, but I could say, thanks for pointing that out. I hear you. Okay, that worked better. That helped soothe things. That was a good thing. Thanks for telling me, I hear you. Cause that's really what you want when you're saying something, you wanna be heard and thanks for telling me. Uh, I really couldn't get to the point where I'd say, I'll try harder. <laughs> just like, I'm not gonna, it just doesn't, it's not who I am. So it's not a big deal to me that I'll try to remember. Sometimes I'd say, then she changed and the whole problem went away. So what did she do? She poked her head and she had a smile on her face and she said, John. And I'm like, what happened? What did I do that was good? <laughs> she said, John, I've noticed that you've been turning out the light more often and I really love it. 
And I like took that in the first time I'd heard that. And then she said, and sometimes you still forget. And I just want to remind you how happy it makes me. And she walked out of the room. No mm -hmm. response from me, just left that space. She did that three times in some version of that. And from that point on, I turned out that light. And to this day, three years after she died, I think of her with love in my heart every time I turn out that light. You see, it's motivating somebody with love by looking at what they do right and loving them though. And if you do this, that makes me happy, you know, and leave it. It's information that goes into his computer and always men are motivated to do what makes you happy, particularly if they don't feel they've been made wrong. Just as women are motivated to find their love again on their own, if you don't make them wrong for the moments where they're not feeling so much love and they want to express what's bothering them. If you've enjoyed this clip and want to listen to the full episode, go to the Love Lab podcast, episode 156, How to Cope with Stress in Relationship.